Hello everyone. So today we're going to be making our Slimline Folio album. And this is a project in conjunction with Intercraft.com where they have a fantastic Stamperia line. So I've got the so Vagabond in Japan, which I used on the original one. And today I'm going to be using the Alice Through the Looking Glass to the new collections they have in stock. Now, if you've seen the intro, you'll know that I designed this to be quite a cost-effective album. And I'm using just one of the 8x8 pads today. And I will have plenty of papers left over at the end to use for other projects as well. Or if you've got the Alice pad, why not get the background ones as well? And if you get two of the eight bay pads, you'll definitely be able to make three, if not more, projects using the papers. Because the background ones don't have the papers with the images and the tags, so it really goes a little bit further. So yeah, so head over to Intercraft, have a look at what they've got in stock. So let's start by just making our cover. So I said it was cost effective because we're only using the one piece of our grey board. Now I'm using one and a half millimetre here. So let's grab my trimmer. And we're going to be making it so it fits that eight by eight. So let me just grab this pad so I can just get my arm nice and straight. So I'm going to take my grey board down to eight and one sixteenth. So it's just a tiny little hair's breadth extra. That'll just give me some breathing room when I'm adding my pages and things. So I apologize now if I wobble the table. Yeah. So I've just taken a little slither off to make it eight and a sixteenth. And my pages are going to be five and seven sixteenths. Sounds very strange, but what it is, is five and a half and just back one sixteenth. That's probably easier way of doing it. So you can see my five and a half line there. I've just gone back a tiny little bit. So five and seven sixteenths. And I'm just gonna take the piece that came off. I'm just gonna turn it around so I've got my nice cut edges here and I'm just going to do exactly the same so there's my two albums that's oh, my covers and my spine here so if you're not using A4 that central spine is 8 and 16 tall and it's about three quarters of an inch wide And now it's just a case of covering it using whichever method you prefer. Now, I like to use my tapes, so I'm going to just get my construction tape. I'm going to take those right the way. And I'm going to cover the short side. Now you've probably seen me do this a million times before. Well, we go through it one more time. And cut. So yeah, this is a fantastic album, as I said, using very limited supplies and stretching our paper quite far. And again, you're only using one Um, eight by eight pad and not even the full one and what's all I'm doing now is I'm taking my scissors and I'm cutting towards the corners so I'm just cutting that tape away in a little V shape just towards the corner and cutting it away and then 
like to just rub it on, rub it over a little bit, and then just pinch it from the middle, and then just pinch outwards. I didn't actually, yeah, there. I was worried then I didn't cut one of the corners, but I had. Thank goodness. And now, the long edge. I'm just going to take my Teflon tool and just rub down all the edges, get it nice and flat. I'm just going to repeat that on the other large cover. Just putting it down the middle and then wrapping three edges. And cutting it off. So when I'm cutting it off, you can see I'm just doing it a little bit short because that's going to be covered later anyway. Now I'm going to cut those V's again. Now, if you haven't got the tape, don't panic. You can just do it in the normal way. There's plenty of tutorials online of how to cover it in your cardstock. Or instead, I know the Cool Cats have got a video showing how to do that. Uh, and um, Tracy Rogers has got a really good one too. So have a look at those YouTube channels and you'll find ways of covering it. There we are, so we've done our two covers, just burnish it all down. Then I can bring back my spine. And I'm just gonna cover the top and bottom A little bit of tape. I don't want you to have to go up to the edge. I'm just trying to cover that center little piece for later on. Okay, board, just flatten it out. And now I'm just going to cut my tape with an extra inch top and bottom. I'm going to try and get it as flat as I can. I'm going to take one of my covers and just place it down the middle. Okay, so I've got the sticky side up of the tape and I've just placed my back cover on. I'm gonna take my spine and this is where you're usually trying to find your two in, uh, double thickness and working it out. But if you just put your spine on top like that, Hold them together. I find it easier if I do it this way. Keeping the top and bottom lined up, I'm going to flip it over, press it down. And when I open it up, i just give it a little tease out. I've now got my double thickness gap. So I'm just going to pull my tape up taut and over. And that has given us a nice coverage, but also made our hinge. And it's just a case of repeating it now at the other side. I'm gonna place my tape down. Get that so we're around halfway. Bring my cover. Now I'm gonna use these corners to line up with the other cover, line up there, hold everything together, lift onto the tape, give it a little wiggle, <laughs> and press down to get that contact. Just separate it, 
and pull these down. And now you'll see, you've got a nice coverage on your spine. We don't want these exposed. Just take your tape again. And I'm just covering up those two spaces. Just take my Teflon tool and burnish it all down and wiggle. And that is our folio cover made. So now I'm going to grab my cardstock and start building the inside. So I've got my black cardstock ready to go. And today I'm using the foundation cardstock by Creative Expression. Again, I got this from Intercraft. So I've got a few sheets ready to go. Let's open up the trimmer. Now I like to keep my cardstock off to my right, my trimmer in the middle, and grab a pencil to mark them as I go. So we are going to start with our left cover. So let's grab one sheet, and our left cover is gonna have a pouch on it. So I'm gonna cut this at five inches. And I've got my blade in. Yeah. There we are. Five by nine. Yeah, that's clicked now. And this will be my left cover pouch. So I'm going to put left cover pouch. So LCP, just some initials on it so I know what piece that's going to be. You may not see it, but I can because it's a pencil. And then I just flip it so the name is facing down. So let's grab our next piece. And we're going to start cutting a lot of our opening flaps now. So I'm going to cut it at eight inches first. And the first flap is then five and a quarter inches. So five and one quarter. And this is my first flap. And I turn it upside down. And then my second flap is going to be eight by five inches. Second flap. And I turn it upside down. Then I'm going to make third and fourth flap. Again, these are going to be eight inches tall, both of them. So I'm going to cut it at eight inches first. And the third one is five and one eighth. So five and an eighth. So this is third flap. And the fourth one is at five inches. Okay. Then an optional bit is to have a flap top and bottom of your first flap. So let's do those. So I'm going to cut it at four and a half inches. And my top flap is going to be four inches. So top flap. And my bottom flap is going to be five inches by four and a half. So this is my bottom flap. So that's all my left 
cover things down. So I'm just going to put it to the side and now start on our right hand flap. So we need another pouch for this. So same as we did with that first one. Five by nine. And this is my right cover pouch. The main flap for my right hand side is going to be eight by five. So let's do the five first. Here we go. And eight inches. So this is my main flap. Put it off onto my pile. And now we're going to do our waterfall pages. So we need four of these and they are all seven by four and a half. So if I cut it at seven first, I can get my four and a half, four and a half, and again seven, by four and a half, and four and a half. And these are my WFs, my waterfalls. And then I want uh, a belly band or some, a band to hold down my waterfall. Now this can be whatever size you want. So I'm just gonna Grab this is just an off cut I've got here. I'm going to cut it down to one and a quarter inches. But do you know what? This off cut is one and a quarter. The width isn't as important. So I've just got a long, thin piece. And that's all our cutting done. So let's put our trimmer away and let's grab our scoreboard. So you can see I've turned all my pieces upright so I got the names facing up. Again I like to put them off to the right hand side then I can put them onto my scoreboard and then put them off. So I'm going to grab my X-Cut multi-tool. A lot of people have asked about this. It's just got a lot of different um, like ballpoint ends for embossing. Lots of uh, three different sizes and a piercing tool. So one of my go-to um, equipment. So let's start with our left cover pocket. So because I put them in order, as I bring them to this, I will then flip them upside down and it'll still remain in perfect order. So I'm gonna, my short side, the five inch at the top, I'm gonna score at half an inch. Then I'm going to turn it round with the long bit at the top, score it half an inch, turn it around 180 degrees and do half an inch again. So I've done sort of all three sides there, turn it upside down. Then my first flap, my first flap, I'm going to score it half and three quarters. So I'm just going to make a little quarter of an inch gap there and flip it over. My second flap is just a half inch. My third flap is half an inch. And five eighths, so just the next channel over. So you just got a slim gap there. And flip it over. And the fourth flap, just a half inch and turn it over. Then I've got my top flaps. So they're gonna be opening like this. So I'm gonna put the four inch at the top and score it half. And the bottom flap, I'm gonna put the five inches across the top and score it half.
And now we've reached the right cover pocket now. So we're gonna do the same as we did with the other pocket, half inch on both the short sides. And one of the long. Turn upside down. Now we've got our main flap. That is just short side across the top, half an inch. And flip over. Now my waterfalls, we're gonna have the seven inch on the top and scored half an inch again. So, throwing them everywhere. Half inch, half inch. Half an inch and half an inch. Okay, and then your belly band, or your waterfall band, sorry, not a belly band, it's not wrapping or anything. It's just going to be at half and an eighth, just to give it that little bit of a gusset. There. And again, I haven't trimmed the um, length yet. I'm going to see what I want to use on it later on. That's all our scoring done. So let's flip them all over again. And they will now be back in the order I want to use them. So let's grab my strong tape. So this is some sticky paws from Cool Cats. So it's just under um, half an inch, which means it'll fit nicely between my score line and the edge of my cardstock. Now with the pouches, you've got this little square. That doesn't need tape, so I'm gonna start at that score line and come across. And you can see it just tears with your finger nice and easy. And you make sure you don't come over that score line, just put it in between the edge and the score line. And again, on the long side, and one more short side. Now, whilst I've got it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my cutting at the same time. And with the pouches, I'm just going to come to, if you can see, I'm on the long edge. I'm going to come towards where the lines cross. And rather than go straight, I'm just going to angle it a little bit to my left. I'm just going to might have a little bit stronger. That just means when you come to fold them, they won't meet, okay? Because you don't want it overlapping, otherwise it becomes a bit too thick. So again, cut towards the line, angle a little bit and cut off. And now we're gonna put that upside down again. With my first flap, just tape down the edge. My second flap, just tape down the edge. So again, you can see by flipping it, I'm keeping the order. So when I come to do things later on, everything will be ready to go. And the fourth flap. And over. The top flap. And the bottom flap. You can see once you get going, you can, it's pretty quick. Now again, I don't need to go to that square, so I'll just go up to the score line just to save a little bit of tape. And the third one. So again, I'm gonna cut those corners off. Place them off to the side. So my main flap. So down and then the same with the four waterfalls 
Yep, it's all lines on the top. Upside down. Upside down. And the last one. No. And then just the band left, just a little bit there. And there we go. All our pieces are ready. So let's just fold the Teflon tool. I'm using it, it's from the Cool Cat. It's brilliant because sometimes when you use a plasticky one, you get those um, like silvery lines. Well, with the Teflon tool, you don't. It doesn't mark your cardstock. Just bring these over to my left. Turn it over. So the first flap, I've got two of these score lines. Now they're quite close together. So I just like to tease them over. And as you're doing this, what you're actually doing as well is burning down, uh, burnishing down your tape. Second flap just has the one. So with long pieces, you may notice that what I'm doing when I'm actually burnishing, I'm starting in the middle and working out. That just helps keep it nice and straight. Now one eighth spines are quite tricky to fold. So I just sort of tease it over like that. And then just gently burnish that. And you should get your one eighth gusset there. Fourth flap, just the one. Top flap. Bottom flap. Now we've, we've got one, another of these pouches. In the middle and work out. Let's get that tape down. Your main flap. And all your waterfalls. And then with your waterfall band, just again, work around that one eighth. Just give it a little wiggle back and forwards and you'll get your, oh, done it the wrong way. Let's bring it back. There we are. And that's all our pages prepared. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna grab my cover, grab a couple of my magnets, and we're ready to start assembling. Okay, so I've got my pages again on my right hand side and I've got their names facing up. I've got my cover which I'm going to open up and the inside is the bit where I put the extra tape over the top to hide those gaps just so that the outside then is a bit neater. So we're going to take our left cover pouch. Now this is going to be a nice pouch to slide things under and we're going to build all our pages onto this. So make sure that you're putting it down with your flap towards the middle so that the opening is off to your left. So to do that I'm just going to take off my tape. Now I do like to run a little bit of glue down this as well. I'm using the Cosmic Shimmer acrylic glue, again, from Intercraft. Just because I'm building everything onto this, I want it to be secure. 
but also the glue will give me a little bit of wiggle time as well. And just to make it easy, I'm going to just turn my cover around. Now, I don't want to go right up to that join. I want to come just slightly in. Otherwise, it's going to catch when you close. So make sure you find where your chipboard is and just come in a little bit. Now, when we did our cover, we also cut it with that extra 1 16th. So you'll have a little tiny gap each side as well, just for a little bit of error room. Because after all, we are just human. And then I'm gonna do the same. Add some glue to my top and bottom. Bring it this way, I find it easier to do it like that. I hold down in the, bo the bottom, uh, in the middle, grab my Teflon tool, rub it down. This just gives me a nice flat pouch to work on. So this is my left cover pouch where I can just slot in a load of my photos or anything that's a little bit bigger than your six by fours. So we've now got our first flap, which is folded with that little gusset there. I'm gonna peel back a little bit of the tape and just fold it off at a 90 degree angle. So I've got a little bit exposed at the top, but none of this is exposed. So I can pull it down without it sticking. Now, just to get my head in, I'm gonna turn it again upright. So the hinge bit, that thick bit, is towards the outer side of our album. I'm just gonna line it up with the edge of my pouch. Let's take it all off. So you can see once I was happy with the placement, I could, that little bit was sticking out, I could just pull it all back. And now I'm gonna open it and burnish it down. So that is now the left, the first flap opening out to the left. So our second flap Let's open it out. Now, if you want, you can just mitre your two corners. So that's all I'm doing is just cutting up to that score line, just to angle it a little bit. You don't have to. Some people do, some people don't. Just depends what mood I'm in, how quick I'm working. So again, now I've got my page flat. I'm gonna Again, line it up onto that page with a hinge off to the left. So by doing that, what I've done is made a page that opens up and then opens up again twice to the left. And now I'm going to take the third page Like I say, you can mitre, just make sure you go only go up to the first score line on this one. And you're holding this one. Don't go to that second one. And 90 degrees out. And this time I want my gusset onto the right hand side. So if you look, that's how my album is. It's going to go. Make sure these two pages are open, and we're going to place this again, making sure you don't go over that spine. Let's just get my Teflon tool in. So now, because that gusset was shorter than this one, this was my quarter of an inch, this was my one eighth, they will sit one on top of each other nicely like that. And again, I want another page opening out. So my fourth flap, let me turn it around so my fold is off to my right this time. 
come off those corners. Again, 45 degrees outwards. And I'm gonna line it up. Off to the right. What you wanna also make sure here now, when you're adding your second and fourth flap, these top ones, is that you're not impinging on that score line there. Okay. If you are finding when you fold it, it is catching there, no problem. Just grab your trimmer and just trim off a little bit off the edge. And there we have the right hand pages fold in, then the left hand pages fold in on top. So let's grab my top and bottom flap. Now these are ones where I really would advise cutting off that angle because you don't want it sticking off to the side. Okay, so I'm just gonna take off a little bit and this time that hinged bit is going towards the top of our album. So I know it's pretty hard to see black on black. So what you can do is grab some white paper and line up those two corners, making sure my downward pages are lined up or the sides are lined up and take it off. And now I'm just gonna repeat it with the bottom one. So this time the hinged bit, let me just mite up, is going to be on the bottom. So this will open up and this will open down. So what I wanna do now is close my top one. I'm lining up, so I'm butting the bottom one up to it and then lining up on the bottom flap. So I've used that to help me line it up, keeping an eye on the left and right hand side and sticking it down. And that is the left hand side already done. So I'm grabbing my right hand side pieces. And here we are another pouch. So I'm just gonna take off the long one because I'm gonna add the glue. Now this time I'm gonna turn my album so I can work here. So again, wherever my chipboard ends, I'm just gonna come in a little hair's breadth and line up the top and bottom too and stick it down. Let's open it up and burnish it down. And again, I'm gonna take off these two Use the glue. I'm gonna hold down the middle and then just work from the middle to stick it down. Of course, it just makes sure that the opening obviously is on the right hand side this time. So we've got our main flap. This is our page. So I'm just Pull it back, oh, didn't mite to the corners. Wouldn't be a disaster if I didn't, but yes, keep doing it. And this time I want that folded hinge off to my right hand side. So I'm just lining it up. So remember now this is my exposed piece. So I don't want that to touch until I'm ready. There we go. Let's burn it down. So I've got a flap that opens that way. Let's attach the waterfalls. Now this is the bit where you want to take some time and grab some of the white as well again. So when I'm putting on my waterfall, again I've got my exposed bit there, so I'm working on this corner, I'm lining up that left hand page but I'm looking down towards the bottom here is lined up more so than the top because if I place this one down wonky, then my entire waterfall is going to be, 
going off in some direction or other. So there we go. I've kept my eye down the sides. I kept my eye on the top. And I think I'm pretty pleased with that one. It's quite a nice alignment. So I'm going to lift it up. So I'm going to bring in my second one. Again, peel back just a little bit of the tape. And now I'm going to take that folded edge and I'm going to butt it up to where the hinge met you. You'll notice I haven't cut off the corners on my waterfalls because you will be seeing them all the time. So I'm just going to line this up. Now I'm more concerned with what's happening down the bottom here than I am with making sure it's perfectly lined with that hinge. So there we are. It's touching here. It's overlapping a little bit there, but I don't mind because what I want more than anything is the bottom to be straight. Now my tape tore, so let me just get in from this side. Okay, and press it all down. And I got my third one. I didn't want to take all the tape off, but never mind. Again, I'm lining up with that half inch flap from the one before and on top. But I was keeping more of an eye, as I said, on this edge coming down here and here because I want it to be nice and level. So you can stop after three pages, that's fine. But if you add an extra one, what you do have is a space for some extra um, six by six photos. A six by four photo, sorry. So again, take off a little bit. Now with this one, I can put it down as I have before and I would have that exposed. Or if I turn it over, flip my tape this way and I have it facing down this way, I can actually use that half inch on top of this and that will hide all my workings. Right, so by placing it on top of that way, now when I open this, I don't have that half inch to cover later. So it's a nice way of just finishing off your waterfall album, uh, waterfall part without having any hinges to cover later on. And then it's just a case now of taking my, um, what are we going to call it, a waterfall band. I still haven't cut the length. I don't mind about that yet. But what I am going to do is I'm going to take some of my construction tape and I'm just going to take it and just take my double sided tape off a little bit. A little bit here and take it around and that's just going to strengthen it. So when you're opening and closing your band, that's just going to give it a little bit of strength. Again, totally optional, you don't have to do it. If you haven't got the tape, don't worry. But I'm gonna put some glue onto this. I'm gonna, you can measure the middle, but I'm gonna risk it and just go by eye here. I've tucked it under my four flaps, aligned it in the middle and pressed down. I, don't, I know I don't want it that much, so let's, chop off that bit. And there we have our album base constructed. And now it's just a case of you decorating it as you wish. So when I'm decorating it, I will be adding the magnets. Okay, or you can do it now. So let's put it on. So the magnets I'm using are new neodymium ones, and I go for the half mil one. So if you just type into Amazon or eBay, or anyway, just type in half a mil magnets. So 0.5 millimeter, you get nice thin ones. Now I tend to use the 10 or 12 mil size then. And I'm gonna place my first magnet up 
so let's have a look. So this was flap number one. So let's open it up. The front of flap number two in the top left hand corner. And the bottom left hand corner. So I'm just using my construction tape. You can just use your um, double sided tape, whatever you want. So I'm going to grab my double sided tape this time. And I'm just going to cut two tiny little squares. And what I'll do then is I'm going to put my magnet on top. And place a little bit of the tape there. And this is can be quite tricky because it doesn't really want to stick to the metal. There we go. One and two. And as I close it, let's make sure everything is lined up because these magnets will help keep everything in position as well. So one and two. So that's them up, but that um, little bit of tape isn't gonna be enough to hold it in place. So I'm just gonna take some more of my construction tape and place it on top. I think the cool cats do mag pops as well, which are brilliant for hiding it. And what happens here then is that tape has two jobs. One, it's holding it down, and two, it sort of smooths up over the edges. So when you put your paper on, you won't get that harsh edge. And there we have it, that little clink. We're going to do the same over on our right cover. If I can find the end of my tape, here we are. So I'm going to use four magnets so far another four here so we've got we've used eight magnets in total My two little magnets. Place them on top. Put some of the double sided on top of the magnets. Peel off the tape. Shut it nice and flat. And then just cover them up. And then the last place you will need a magnet for definite is here on your band. Now, this one is a little bit tricky. So I'm going to grab my ruler and I'm going to have a photo mat here, which is going to be coming down four and a quarter and a little gap. So I'm going to place my magnet below that, so somewhere here. That'll do. But if you've already cut your four and a quarter by four and a quarter inch mats, you can just use that as a template and just sort of centralize it there. We'll come to that later on. So again, we're going to just take some of the tape Grab a little bit of my double sided and put my magnet on, double sided tape on. Line up my band and then just smooth that out with my tape. And there we have our pages added, magnets added, 
and it's all over to you now to decorate it. But if you want to follow out with the decorations, just grab your eight by eight papers and grab some just plain cream or white card, whatever color you want your photo mats and we'll get decorating. So now you've got the basic construction of your book, grab your papers and have a look in the description below for part two, where I'm gonna show you how to decorate your slimline folio.